lab guy here just a real quick update for you on the NBTV uh, dissector cam project I analyzed the lens situation the back focus error that I've uh, that I've got in the uh, design and I did a simple uh, outdoor camera obscura technique with the lens uh, I removed the lens from the holder and got a millimeter scale like this and measured the back distance from the lens with it set to infinite focus with the iris all the way open this gives us the shallowest depth of field the most critical focus and then I carefully measured that distance with my millimeter rule and determined from this reference edge on here which mates to the flat face here this gave me a reference point and I got a measurement of 18 millimeters I believe 18 millimeters from that I then measured in from the face of the lens mount to the face of the dissector tube glass which is not the focal plane but that's as far as I can shove the ruler without smashing the tube I measured to the glass and got that measurement and it was five millimeters that came out to five millimeters then you have to take into account that there is a Pyrex glass disc bonded to the front of the drift tube on this image dissector tube and I measured the thickness of that as well as you can from the outside and got an additional two and a half millimeters to the coating on the inside of the glass which is a um, it's a photosensitive coating I forget what the materials are I want to say selenium at any rate it all adds up to seven and a half millimeters of error that I have my lens is positioned when it's mounted in here and screwed onto the um, screwed onto the camera housing it's seven and a half millimeters too close to the tube which is what I suspected that's why I can't focus any farther out than this because what's called the back focus is incorrect so I'm reprinting this disc right now you can hear the machine and I'm adding seven and a half millimeters to the back side of this disc and it will it is currently 10 a.m. and I calculate that the 3d printing will be done at around 430 this afternoon probably more like five o'clock Cura the slicer software is notoriously optimistic about printing times that assumes that I don't have any uh, problems with my printing filament as the humidity has been high and PLA printing filament gets very unhappy in high humidity it becomes brittle and breaks or when it's printing it likes to fizz the, wa the water that's embedded in the PLA will flash to steam as it's printed and it makes the surface kind of fuzzy looking it's not it's not a showstopper on internal layers we don't really care um, the hot print head tends to iron it out as it goes over it on the second pass so you can hear the printer in the background and I'll show it to you in a moment uh, it is currently printing the a thicker disc so there we go I think we're up to the fourth layer and it's been going for uh, 45 minutes so this is going to take all dang day as we scientists like to say all dang day so at any rate we're in progress in process 
to make progress to uh, repair at least one problem we were able to critically analyze and uh, of course I'll keep you posted on how that comes out in the next video. For the curious this is the Ender 5 Pro 3D printer and compared to the previous two that I owned the first one never worked at all I mean it wouldn't even run it, it turned out to have a bunch of miswiring in the harness according to the fellow I gave it to so all the mo well, not all the motors one of the motors ran backwards at half speed and so on so it was pretty goofed up the second printer was a really nice printer but it was a closed architecture and you could only get software and material from its original manufacturer I've moved on from that one and this is the Ender 5 Pro by Creality. Um, I bought it, I assembled it, I calibrated it, I printed. Say no more. Your mileage may vary. So that's the update on the optical situation on the camera right now. And uh, once I warm up, have another cup of coffee, I will sit down and begin working on the deflection amplifiers. We have the LH0002 deflection amplifier chips, which have a maximum drive current of plus or minus 200 milliamps is their rating. I'm pushing the suckers out 100% beyond that, at least on peaks. And they're holding up but they will burn the flesh right off of a fingertip that goes in there to see how hot they are. So that, that's my scientific method of testing. Although I've heard rumors that they make these things. <laughs> but it's no truth to the rumor that Lab Guy might have a masochistic streak. Oh, zoomed in, are we? So that concludes this report on the uh, state of the NBTV dissector cam. Greetings to all of the new subscribers. Greetings to all of the old subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Keep watching. We'll keep you posted. Um, as you can see, if I do frequent posts, they're of a lower quality. Um, information rich but not uh, as gratifying as a, a longer deeper dive we will get into that when the camera is working well um, deflection amplifier progress continues and I'll keep you posted of successes um, I know you like to watch the resistors go up in flames and who doesn't and we'll uh, include some of that should we uh, come across some of it so until next time, Lab Guy out.